Is keto bad for the heart? Another study in the headlines. What do you think? I'm Dr. Eric Westman, and if you haven't gotten my handout yet on starting keto the right way, look in the description below. Well, another paper uh, out, well, should I say abstract, uh, because an abstract doesn't really give you the whole paper to be able to comment upon. And I have to say, I didn't want to do a video on this because it's not worth doing a video on it. But so many people asked me, and, and because it was a news release from the American College of Cardiology, low carbohydrate, high fat, keto-like, what does that mean anyway, diet associated with increased risk of CVD, cardiovascular disease. Well, my initial take on this is it's you know, much ado about nothing again, uh, but let's just go through and, and next time maybe you'll just take my word for it, that it's not worth going through this paper. Um, so what did they do? Again, I'm waiting for the randomized trial of taking people on a keto diet or in any other diet, for that matter, uh, randomizing them and seeing if there are heart disease outcomes that are different over time. That would be an experimental study, and I would give a lot of emphasis on that. Um, of course, then the hallmark of science is replication. You'd always want to see the second study as well. But this is not a randomized trial, a prospective study looking at a keto diet. And I'm not even sure what a keto-like diet means. So, so anyway, this is a, a group from the, uh, from the UK, and they presented at the American College of Cardiology, which you would think would be a reputable organization. But as I found, most physicians kind of lose their, their minds when it comes to nutrition, meaning suddenly they don't have to be real careful about the methods and, and you can just use words very flippantly like keto-like. Um, so uh, the presentation was done using data from what was called the UK Biobank. Now, we're getting into this world now of nutritional epidemiology. What that means is you follow people over time. Uh, you don't tell them what to do. You just ask them what they do in various ways. And sometimes you don't ask them very much about what they're doing, but you, you take their word for it. Um, and the UK Biobank has uh, 70,000 people in there. And what they've done is they've assembled people with uh, their clinical information, meaning their, what they're like and their, their characteristics. And then they're also looking at the genetics to try to match up the genes with the health outcomes. And they uh, are following 70,000 people. Uh, of course, it's hard to get everyone every time, um, uh, but let's just say they have 70,000 people. And this report says they follow people over 11 years, which is consistent with the UK Biobank information. And so the problem, major problem, is they found 305 people out of 70,684 who met the criteria of a keto-like diet. So what does that mean? So first of all, 305 out of 70,684 is 0 0.0043. So basically it's 0.4% of the entire group in that data set. So how do, it just reminds me of these popular shows where you put a ball in at the top and then it goes down and, and it ends up in one of, well, 70,000 buckets at the bottom. And what they did is they found 305 of these people who on one form, how did they figure out what they were eating? There was a, what's called a 24-hour diet recall, which is basically, please fill out what you ate and drank over the last 24 hours. And the way the methods say, upon enrollment, a 24-hour diet recall was taken and cholesterol level, Let, you know, 10 years ago. They're follow oh, and so if you wrote down what you ate and drank and you were categorized by some sort of analysis, I can't figure that out. This is just an abstract, okay? <laughs> and you said that you had had less than 25% of your calories from carbs, 
and over 45% of calories from fat based on that 24-hour diet recall, what you had in the last 24 hours, then you were categorized as keto-like. So, I mean, <laughs> a 24-hour diet recall taken once 10 years ago is the information they have to categorize people. And first of all, keto-like is like saying you're pregnant-like. You're, you're kind of red-like. I mean, what was <laughs> it? If you follow a plan like I teach, I've taught at Duke and published papers on this plan, it's more like 5% carbs, 10%. You don't have to eat the same amount every day. You know, what, what if uh, this person 10 years ago had a bad carb day, you know, over-consumed or, or under-consumed and, and, uh, or didn't eat anything, was sick and didn't have under, uh, had less than 25% carbs, they'd be categorized as keto-like which gets into this whole idea of confounding. Confounding meaning interference, or, or is there something else going on? Let's say 10 years ago, they asked people what they were eating, and uh, we don't have any idea what they were eating. They might not have eaten anything, but uh, maybe a, a, a stick of butter, for example. I don't know. Uh, people do amazing things sometimes. They would be categorized as keto-like, or someone was not feeling well, they, they had... Um, let's say some, uh, just some meat yesterday because they didn't feel well, they'd be categorized as keto-like. So one major problem is people who weren't feeling well might have underreported what they're eating or, or had uh, 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 shown that they were eating a keto-like diet. That term is, is meaningless to me and, and really kind of smacks of this whole idea that uh, that the, the people are, are like taking pot shots at keto when, you know, don't lose your mind in terms of science and, and, and looking at things in a, in a credible way. That just re reduces your credibility if you're a researcher. You want to be very precise about the measurements you're taking and a food recall 10 years ago and then seeing what happened to people uh, is just not sufficient it really doesn't matter what they found now because, you know, they t had 305 people out of 70,000. And what they did, and this is, I think, why it got into the American College of Cardiology. They had a control group, a, a selected group, not, not like a randomized control group going forward in time. They went back to that original 70,000 people and found 1,100 people who were matched by age and gender. And again, just kind of makes me wonder, uh, there must be more to this in terms of the filter of total people in the biobank and then how they got assembled into these groups and how each step is taken to assemble these people needs to be described. That is what's called in the consort statement for clinical trials, the, the filter of the study. Every step along the way, if you're doing a prospective clinical trial, you have to say how many people dropped out here, how many stayed in here, how did people get into the study, and what happened during the study, and we have no information. We, we go from thousands of people down to 305 keto-like followers. I want to stop here, but wait, it gets better. <laughs> because then they they look at the people uh, that they've assembled, which you know probably is like flipping coins or rolling dice. Um, but they uh, found that nine point eight percent outcomes, meaning the uh, either diabetes or or heart attack or stents, uh, stroke. Uh, it's called a combined outcome. And the, and the, the, how you follow people in clinical trials is, is fascinating and. Uh, the combined out endpoints and overall mortality always kind of go hand in hand. And you, you don't want just these combined endpoints. You also want mortality. Because in some studies, prospective clinical trials, there may be fewer events, but there's a higher mortality. Or, or there's no change in mortality over time, which is really the endpoint you, you want to have consistent with these other uh, combined uh, cardiac end, endpoints. Um, so there were, uh, if you looked at these folks in the keto-like, there were 305 people out of the 70,000 people. They had a 9.8% combined clinical outcomes, and I, I guess it's over that 11-year period. Remember, this is just an abstract. 
Well, let's think about that. So if you're taking people who are general population, generally healthy, this is not a great thing to have 10% over 10 years. But if you're taking people who have diabetes, hypertension, obesity, 10% events over 10 years is, is actually, well, well, let's think about it. Everyone didn't die. I mean, so even if you, because remember the preconceived idea is that you go on a keto diet, you're going to get a heart attack. Of course, I don't see that in my clinic, and we don't see those signals in clinical trials. But uh, they uh, said they were 9.8% compared to 4.3% in the whatever else someone wanted to eat, but it wasn't the, the less than 25% carbs over 45% fat. Then those folks had a 4.3% rate of stents meaning these uh, uh, tubes you put in the coronary arteries, heart attack, stroke, peripheral artery disease. <sighs> really? So that was the end that in saying that there's twice as much risk of, of cardiovascular disease, all these combined clinical endpoints, going from 4.3 to 9.8% over 10 years in a group of 305 versus 1,100 people in, from a sample of 70,000 people. And I have no idea how these people got assembled. And, uh, you know, I guess it would be an eye-opener if, if everyone had an event or if, if there were deaths that were found. We don't have information about mortality. Um, so, you know, these studies are, are going to be coming out over and over again. And then this group also reported the LDL levels being a little high. But I hope you know by now the type of LDL really matters. If it's large LDL, it doesn't have the same risk as the small LDL. So if you're just looking at an LDL, you're not really getting all the detail on that. But then they, this is all they did is they looked at LDL and maybe maybe what all they had. And I remember a conversation with a nutritional epidemiologist, very famous physician researcher. He said, well, you know, that's the best data we have, these very small associations, well, that's not good enough. I mean, if, if you're going to go on a 24-hour diet recall taken once even or even periodically over that period of time, that means you didn't go home and, and follow what they ate. You didn't, uh, you know, a clinical trial going forward, if you're going to have drug approval, we actually, uh, we, <laughs> the general consensus is that you count how many pills are taken. You, you want to make sure that they're actually taking the pills of the drug that's being studied to know that this is actually uh, what it's happening, that the pills are being taken. Pill counts are, are, are commonly part of the study or you have some biologic validation that someone's taking a medication. And here we have no validation of what people were eating. And, and I, I, it's really kind of sad, again, how scientists kind of lose their mind in terms of precision and accuracy about information when it comes to nutrition. It's sad because nutrition is you know, more powerful. Good nutrition is more powerful than medications. And if you do it right, you can get people off medicines and reverse the medical problems at the same time, which is, I know, unbelievable. So you won't believe me. <laughs> but uh, so this, no, this uh, bottom line, this doesn't show that people eating a, a, a well-formulated adequate protein keto diet. So there's actually a name for a worked out way to do it. Um, you know, someone could have uh, just been eating um, uh, pork rinds, for example, or chicharrones, and they would be just in this keto-like category in this study. And that's not what we recommend. While uh, you have to have whole foods and good foods uh, in a program uh, that we recommend or that's generally recommended today, by reputable people. Uh, so, um, you know, this is, is uh, kind of sad. It got through screening. First, the, the scientists who did this thought they were, I think, coming up with something important. Uh, maybe they were trying over and over and over to, to see that keto was bad. I mean, that's sort of the, the uh, implication because they're using that in the title. Um, and then it's sad that the American College of Cardiology reputable organization that must have had some sort of vetting process for the type of science being presented. And uh, that uh, this is uh, really not worthy of uh, presentation at a national meeting anywhere. Uh, so I, again, I guess I, I'm the reviewer of the, the, these things out there. And please use 
great methodology when you're when you're doing science uh, science on diets and nutrition require and our our the science is worth and deserves the same sort of attention that clinical trials of medications deserve and 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 actually are required to get FDA approval for. But sadly, that's not the case. Uh, anyone can really say almost anything about diets, and there's no recourse um, uh, or even an abstract like this, which uh, uh, maybe if a paper comes out, there will be more detail and more information to rebut the rebuttal. But uh, I didn't think this was worthy of even making a report about it, but because so many people, including my patients, ask, you asked me for it, here it is. Uh, don't, uh, don't change uh, what you do, and don't worry about this one. If you haven't downloaded my Start Keto in the right way, look down below. And of course, if you like this, like it, ring the notif notification bell, send it to a friend. You know, this is a grassroots movement. It's not going to come from top down. It's you telling your friends and neighbors and, and loved ones about how well you're doing. Um, hope that's helpful. Until the next time, take care. this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and check out AdapterLifeAcademy.com.